Welcome back to World History Explored. We are delighted to have you with us once again, and in today's episode, we're delving deep into the rich tapestry of Poland's history. We humbly request that you watch the episode in its entirety to truly grasp the nuances of this captivating narrative. Before we start our journey, let's embark on a brief linguistic adventure. The name Poland originates from the Slavic term Polani, which translates to people of the field or people living in open lands. So without further ado, let's unfold the chapters of Poland's past together. Prehistory The rich tapestry of Poland's history extends far beyond its medieval castles and modern-day borders. This nation's roots are buried deep within the annals of prehistoric and protohistoric times. A timeline that spans a staggering 600,000 years showcases a land intermittently inhabited by members of the genus Homo. It's a captivating journey that traverses the Stone Age, Bronze Age, and Iron Age, reflecting not just the evolution of civilizations but also the very essence of human tenacity. One of the most significant milestones in this timeline is the ushering in of the Neolithic period, marked predominantly by the migration of the linear pottery culture from the Danube River area around 5500 BC. The linear pottery culture is credited with establishing the first settled agricultural communities on Polish soil. As time progressed between 4400 and 2000 BC, the indigenous post-Mesolithic communities adopted and refined this agricultural lifestyle, embedding farming deep into the Polish way of life. Moving into the Bronze Age, Poland experienced a cultural awakening around 2400-2300 BC, and by 750-700 BC, the Iron Age dawned. Amidst these age transitions, various cultures left their mark, with the Lusatian culture being notably influential. By 400 BC, a significant shift occurred with the Celts of the Latin culture making Poland their home. Their reign, however, was transient, as emerging cultures with strong Germanic components, first influenced by the Celts and later the Roman Empire, began to dominate. The subsequent Great Migration period of the European Dark Ages around 500 AD saw the exodus of these Germanic groups, making way for the Balts to settle in the wooded regions to the north and east. The Slavic connection to Poland, both culturally and genetically, has been a subject of extensive research and debate. While some archaeological findings suggest a Slavic presence in Poland for roughly 2,500 years, genetic studies paint a broader picture, linking modern Poles to those who inhabited the area thousands of years ago, starting in the early Neolithic. Some theories even postulate that early Slavic civilizations might have existed in parts of Poland much earlier, possibly aligning with ancient cultures like Przeworsk and Zarobinci around the 3rd century BC. By the 9th and 10th centuries, the West Slavic and Lakitic peoples, along with other tribal groups, began to coalesce into larger tribal units on the Polish landscape. This tribal mosaic, with its complexities and alliances, laid the groundwork for what would become the state of Poland in the 10th century, a testament to the nation's resilience and adaptability. The Piast period, 10th century, 1385. The tapestry of Poland's history is marked with vibrant threads representing rulers and events that shaped the nation. Perhaps none were as instrumental in molding Poland's destiny as the Piast dynasty, which reigned from the 10th to the 14th centuries. The narrative of the Polish statehood begins with Duke Misko I. His reign, commencing sometime before 963 and concluding with his death in 992, saw the significant unification of the Lakitic tribal lands. Misko's acceptance of Christianity in 966 after marrying Princess Dubravka of Bohemia heralded the baptism of Poland. This monumental event serves as a symbolic marker for the genesis of Polish statehood. Misko's successor, his son Boleslaw Vard the Brave, took Poland's realms to greater heights. He solidified the Polish church's structure and further expanded the territories. Notably, Boleslaw I was crowned as Poland's first king in 1025. His endeavors to Christianize Eastern Europe met with challenges, notably with the martyrdom of Adalbert of Prague in Prussia. However, significant diplomatic successes, such as the recognition of the Archbishopric of Gniezno by Holy Roman Emperor Otto III during the Congress of Gniezno in 1000, fortified Poland's sovereignty. Subsequent Piast rulers grappled with internal and external challenges. 
The expansive ambitions of Bol's law estranged Poland's resources, leading to a temporary collapse of the monarchy. Bolslaw II's turbulent reign saw conflicts with the church, notably the murder of Bishop Stanislaus of Szepanow, culminating in his dethronement. The era of Bolislaw III Rymouth brought forth a crucial chronicle, the Gesta Principum Polonorum by Gallus Anonymous, which illuminated Poland's early history. The death of the Piast line saw Poland under the aegis of Louis I of Hungary from the House of Anjou. His daughter Jadwiga would ascend to the throne in 1384, sowing the seeds for Poland's next transformative chapter. Jagiellonian Dynasty, 1385-1572 Poland's history, especially during the late Middle Ages to the early modern period, presents a rich tapestry of political intrigue, dynastic unions, and cultural renaissance. One of the most pivotal moments during this period was the dynastic union with Lithuania in 1386, this union was a masterstroke of political diplomacy when Grand Duke Jogela of Lithuania wed Queen Jadwiga of Poland, subsequently ascending the Polish throne as King Ladislaw II Jagiello. Their union didn't merely signify a matrimonial alliance. It laid the foundation for a Polish-Lithuanian partnership. Together, they formed one of Europe's grandest political entities, which would stand robustly for centuries to come. The subsequent rulers from the Jagiellonian dynasty, particularly Władysław III and Casimir IV Jagiellon, played crucial roles in shaping the geopolitical landscape of the region. While Władysław III's reign was tragically cut short at the Battle of Varna against the Ottomans, his brother Casimir IV ushered in an era of significant political and territorial expansion. Under Casimir's watchful eyes, the Thirteen Years' War culminated in the significant Peace of Thorn Treaty. This accord reshaped the regional dynamics, especially with the creation of East Prussia under the stewardship of the Teutonic Knights, but as a Polish fief. This was an era when the Quill's power resonated deeply, with Krakow heralding the dawn of the printing era in 1473. However, the rise in the stature of the nobility known as the Slachta during this period was a double-edged sword. The 16th century was a period of religious tumult across Europe, and Poland was no exception. The Protestant Reformation left an indelible mark on Polish Christianity. Yet Poland distinguished itself with its policies of religious tolerance, becoming a sanctuary for those escaping religious persecution. This era, under the reigns of King Sigismund I and II, is often hailed as the Golden Age of the Renaissance in Poland. It was a period that celebrated the genius of luminaries like Nicholas Copernicus, who redefined our understanding of the cosmos. Sigismund II's reign brought about the momentous Union of Lublin in 1569, fortifying the bond with Lithuania. Concurrently, Poland's engagement in the Livonian War showcased its military ambitions in the Northeast. Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth The Commonwealth during the late 16th and early 17th centuries did not just hold sway over vast territories but also championed cultural and political advancement. The influence of the Commonwealth extended far beyond its borders, positioning itself as a formidable player in European affairs. In doing so, it disseminated a brand of Western culture, enriched with Polish characteristics eastwards. The reign of the Swedish House of Vasa in Sweden, starting in 1587, exemplified these challenges. While the kings from this dynasty brought about a certain continuity to the throne, their ambitions, especially those tied to claims in Sweden, often sidetracked the Commonwealth's focus. Moreover, the Counter-Reformation and internal rebellions like the Zebrzydowski Rebellion further tested the stability of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. By the time the Commonwealth entered the 18th century, it was a shadow of its former self. Constant warfare, foreign interventions, and internal decay plagued its existence. As the Saxon House of Wetton took control with rulers like Augustus II the Strong, the Commonwealth further spiraled into a state of dysfunction, culminating in it becoming a mere puppet in the hands of its powerful neighbors. In the waning years of the 18th century, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth faced imminent extinction. The Commonwealth knew multiple problems, which eventually led to the Russian invasion in May 1792. After brief resistance, King Stanislaw joined the Russian-favored Targowica Confederation, leading to the Second Partition of Poland in 1793. 
Tadeusz Kosciuszko, an acclaimed general, led the charge for a national revolt in 1794, seeking to restore the nation's sovereignty. Despite significant support and efforts to empower the masses, the uprising could not resist the combined might of Russia and Prussia. The third partition in 1795 was the final blow, obliterating the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth from the map. The aftermath saw King Stanislaw abdicating and retiring to Russia, while Kosciuszko eventually settled in the United States. The final decades of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth were tumultuous, marked by reforms, uprisings, and partitions. The once mighty nation, despite efforts to adapt and resist, fell victim to external ambitions and internal strife. Thank you for making it this far. If you are enjoying this episode, please like, share, and leave a comment. Now let's continue exploring Poland's rich history. Partitioned Poland, 1795-1918 Although no Polish state existed from 1795 to 1918, the idea of Polish independence persisted. Numerous uprisings and military actions were conducted against the partitioning countries. After the partitions, military actions by Polish émigrés were initially allied with post-revolutionary France. Jan Henryk Dabrowski's Polish legions participated in French campaigns between 1797 and 1802, hoping their sacrifices would lead to a liberated Poland. In 1797, Józef Wybicki wrote the Polish national anthem, Poland is not yet lost, celebrating Dabrowski's efforts. In 1807, following Napoleon's victory over Prussia, the Duchy of Warsaw, a quasi-independent Polish entity, was established. Under the leadership of Józef Poniatowski, its army allied with France in multiple campaigns, including the Austro-Polish War of 1809, which expanded the duchy's territory. However, its last military engagements were during the French invasion of Russia in 1812 and the subsequent German campaign of 1813. The duchy's constitution abolished serfdom, reflecting the ideals of the French Revolution. Following Napoleon's downfall, the Congress of Vienna, 1814-1815, established a new European order. Adam Jerzy Czartoryski, formerly close to Emperor Alexander I, championed the Polish cause. The Congress recognized some Polish gains from the Napoleonic era, replacing the Duchy of Warsaw with the Kingdom of Poland in 1815, informally known as Congress Poland. In 1830, repressive policies prompted the November Uprising against Russia. Although initiated by Polish patriots, its leadership eventually adopted a conservative stance. The uprising culminated in a full-blown war with Russia, ending in Polish defeat by 1831. Following this, many Polish combatants and activists, including luminaries like Adam Mickiewicz, Julius Slowacki, Cyprian Norwood, and Frederick Chopin, emigrated to Western Europe, an event known as the Great Emigration. The Russian government's continuous assaults on Polish identity culminated in a new wave of unrest in the 1860s. During peaceful protests in Warsaw, Russian forces attacked civilians. To undercut them, the Russian-imposed Polish government instated a selective conscription, prompting the January Uprising of 1863. The uprising, lasting until 1864, eventually involved both radical and conservative Poles, but was ultimately suppressed. In its aftermath, the Russian government implemented land reforms in Congress Poland, setting the stage for capitalist development. Following the failure of the January Uprising, Polish territories, especially those under Russian and Prussian control, faced increased repression. The Russians in particular sought to more fully integrate Poland into their empire, rebranding it from the Kingdom of Poland to the Vistula Land. This saw the imposition of the Russian and German languages in public communications, coupled with increased restrictions on the Catholic Church and efforts at Russification and Germanization in education. The era also saw the rise of positivism in Poland, which replaced Romanticism as the dominant intellectual, social, and literary trend, particularly among the burgeoning urban bourgeoisie. However, by the 1890s, the grip of positivism began to wane as urbanites increasingly embraced pan-European nationalism. As the 20th century dawned, Poland saw the revolution of 1905-1907, which was an expression of long-standing political frustrations and stifled national ambitions. 
Key figures like Roman Domowski and Josef Pilsudski rose to prominence during this upheaval. While the revolt was eventually quelled, it left a lasting impact on the national psyche. World War I represented a turning point in Poland's quest for independence. The Polish experience during the war was a complex one. Many Poles were forcibly conscripted into the armies of the partitioning powers, often pitted against one another due to the alliance of Germany and Austria against Russia. Józef Pilsudski, an emblematic figure of Polish nationalism, formed the Polish legions in 1914, which fought alongside the Austro-Hungarian army against Russia. However, his refusal to place his troops under German command led to his arrest, further solidifying his status as a symbol of Polish resistance. In the midst of the war, the German forces captured Warsaw in August 1915. A significant geopolitical shift occurred when, in November 1916, Germany and Austria declared the formation of the Kingdom of Poland on the territories previously controlled by Russia. However, this kingdom was largely an autonomous puppet state without a monarch. The puppet state existed until November 1918, eventually giving way to the Republic of Poland. Germany's victory in the East through the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk saw harsh terms imposed on Russia, with blatant disregard for Polish interests. Additionally, as the war neared its conclusion, the Germans deliberately crippled the economic capabilities of Polish territories, fearing Poland's potential future economic competition. The final stages of Poland's push for independence occurred in late 1918. As the war concluded, the disintegration of the Austrian army allowed Polish forces to reclaim cities like Chisin and Krakow. However, the collapse of the German war machine, combined with the German Revolution, led to the release of Pilsudski. Upon his return to Warsaw, he was vested with extensive powers and later became the temporary head of state. Despite the triumphs of reclaiming sovereignty, Poland emerged from World War I with internal divisions, significant war-inflicted damage, and an ailing economy. Nevertheless, the resilience of the Polish spirit was evident in its determined journey from a partitioned territory to an independent nation. Second Polish Republic, 1918-1939 Following World War I, the Treaty of Versailles re-established Poland as an independent nation, albeit with certain borders left undecided, leading to conflicts such as the Greater Poland Uprising and disputes with Germany over regions like Silesia. Concurrently, Poland grappled with other territorial issues, notably with Czechoslovakia over Chisin Silesia, and most significantly with Soviet Russia in the Polish-Soviet War of 1919-1921. While the Poles initially advanced into Soviet territory, they were eventually pushed back, culminating in a pivotal victory at the Battle of Warsaw in 1920. The resultant Peace of Riga in 1921 defined Poland's eastern boundaries, but also embedded ethnic and territorial challenges within the new state. Poland's leader, Józef Pilsudski, envisioned an Eastern European Federation called Intermarium, but nationalistic sentiments in the region and at home, notably from groups like the National Democrats, curtailed its realization. Domestically, the March Constitution of 1921 framed Poland's governance amidst a fractured political landscape, highlighted by the tragic assassination of President Gabriel Narutowicz just days after his election in 1922. Throughout this period, the military, particularly under Pilsudski's influence, remained a potent and autonomous entity in Poland's political arena, foreshadowing its pivotal roles in the nation's future. In the era leading up to World War II, Poland's political landscape was primarily shaped by Pilsudski's May Coup of 1926. On 12 May 1926, Pilsudski executed a military overthrow of the civilian government led by President Stanislaw Wojciechowski. The coup was supported by leftist factions and conservative landowners, leaving only the right-wing National Democrats in opposition. Post-coup, the regime began to exert tighter control, and in 1930, the Sejm was dissolved, and numerous opposition members were imprisoned. While the regime allowed political institutions to function, the electoral process was manipulated and dissent was heavily suppressed. Pilsudski, 
upholding a strategy of balancing relations with neighboring powers, signed non-aggression pacts with the Soviet Union in 1932 and Germany in 1934. However, Poland's army was under-equipped and inadequately trained. Following Pilsudski's death in 1935, his allies, known as Pilsudski's colonels, governed Poland. Domestically, suppressed minorities were becoming increasingly restless. By the time World War II broke out, Poland had formed military alliances with Britain and France, but these Western powers were not ideally positioned to assist Poland against its aggressors. World War II Invasions, resistance, and the turmoil of World War II defined Poland's journey during the mid-20th century. Hitler's invasive aspirations in 1939 ignited World War II, despite Poland's recent alliances with Western powers, which, disappointingly, offered little active support. The Wehrmacht's advancements brought cruelty to the Polish civilians, but the nation's plight worsened with the Soviet invasion, culminating in the partitioning of Poland between Germany and the USSR. Poles displayed immense resilience, notably during the Siege of Warsaw and the Battle of Hell. Gerhard Weinberg argued that Poland's invaluable contribution was sharing its code-breaking intelligence, pivotal for the Allies' Enigma decryption efforts. Following the Soviet Union's own clash with Germany in 1941, Poland was further subjugated under German control. The Polish underground resistance, however, was unyielding, with the Polish government in exile in London and the Home Army demonstrating Polish tenacity. As the Holocaust unfolded, tragedies like the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising exhibited the despair and defiance of the Jewish community. As the Soviets advanced in 1944-45, the most significant event of Polish resistance, the Warsaw Uprising, sought to liberate the city before Soviet intervention. However, it was met with fierce German reprisals and subsequent Soviet inaction, leading to heartbreaking losses. Post-war, the geopolitical canvas was redrawn, with Poland's borders shifted westward. Communist dominance rose even as the West, especially at the Yalta Conference, tried to ensure the formation of a democratic Poland. But the reality that unfolded, the compromised sovereignty and dominance of communism, left many Poles feeling betrayed by the West. One of the most harrowing aspects of the war was the targeted extermination of Polish Jews by the Nazi regime. Additionally, at least 1.9 million non-Jewish Polish civilians lost their lives, and countless more were subjected to forced labor, deportations, and other forms of Nazi brutality. This campaign of extermination extended to other ethnicities as well, making the Polish landscape a tragic theater of war and loss. Furthermore, both Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union executed tens of thousands of Polish intellectuals, aiming to incapacitate Polish society and hinder any form of resistance. In the aftermath of the war, Poland's borders underwent significant changes, further complicating its demographic composition. The Soviet Union annexed large portions of pre-war Poland, while Poland in turn received territories from Germany. These territorial shifts resulted in massive population movements, with Germans being expelled from the newly acquired territories and ethnic Poles from the Soviet annexed areas resettling in what was previously German land. Simultaneously, other ethnic tensions came to the fore, particularly between Poles and Ukrainians. Acts of ethnic violence resulted in significant population displacements, further reshaping the demographic fabric of the region. Polish People's Republic, 1945-1989 After the turmoil of World War II, Poland, a nation with a rich and multifaceted history, found itself in the center of Cold War politics. In the immediate post-war period, the tussle for power in Poland portrayed the broader struggle between the democratic West and the communist East. The Yalta Conference of February 1945 established a provisional government in Poland, the Polish Provisional Government of National Unity under Soviet influence. This step marked the beginning of a Soviet stronghold over Polish politics, evident from the arrest and trial of the leaders of the Polish underground state in Moscow. Anti-communist forces, symbolized by entities like the cursed soldiers, vehemently opposed this growing influence, harboring hopes that a possible World War III would see the Soviet Union's downfall. 
However, by 1947, the insurgents' activities reduced considerably after a promised amnesty. The Soviets, aiming to solidify their influence, orchestrated a referendum in 1946 to showcase widespread support for the communist policies. By 1947, the once promised free elections were nothing more than a facade, with the communists controlling the electoral process. However, after facing electoral manipulations, the party's influence diminished, making way for a state socialist system. The period between 1948 and 1955, also known as the Stalinist era, saw the emergence of the Polish People's Republic under the Polish United Workers' Party. The forced merger of the Communist Polish Workers' Party and the historically non-communist Polish Socialist Party further solidified communist control. Leaders such as Władysław Gomułka, who once advocated a moderate approach towards socialism, found themselves imprisoned under Stalinist purges. While the government prioritized military heavy industry, it also made significant strides in public education, health care, and other amenities. Urbanization flourished, and the living conditions of peasants significantly improved. The government's focus on heavy industrialization and urban development reshaped the country's socioeconomic fabric. The mid-1950s marked a brief period of liberalization, primarily attributed to de-Stalinization after the 20th Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Władysław Gomułka's rise to power during the Polish October of 1956 saw Poland retain its socialist goals while mildly liberalizing its internal affairs. Poland's foreign policy during this period was notably marked by its participation in the Warsaw Pact's invasion of Czechoslovakia in 1968, the Polish protests of 1970, and the road to democracy. In December 1970, Poland was rocked by protests triggered by price hikes on essential consumer goods. The discontent, rooted in the population's dissatisfaction with both living and working conditions, erupted in the Baltic Sea port cities of Gdansk, Gdynia, and Szczecin, particularly within the industrial shipyard areas. A significant moment in Poland's history occurred in October 1978, when the Archbishop of Krakow, Cardinal Karol Józef Wojtyla, ascended to the position of Pope John Paul II. His appointment was greeted with national euphoria, a sentiment further amplified during his visit to Poland in June 1979. However, economically, the country's situation remained dire. Fueled by Western credit, Poland's growth was impressive during the early 1970s, but the economy became unstable due to the misuse of borrowed funds and inefficiencies of the centralized planning system. Plus, the 1973 oil crisis further exacerbated the situation. The tipping point was the government's decision to hike meat prices was met with widespread work stoppages, climaxing in the 1980 general strikes in Lublin. By August, strikes had spread throughout the Baltic coast and even halted operations in most coal mines in Silesia. This wave of labor unrest culminated with the signing of the Gdansk Agreement on 31st of August 1980, which recognized the workers' rights to form independent unions. The increasing Soviet military presence at Poland's border in December 1980, combined with warnings from the U.S., created a tense atmosphere. By February 1981, General Wojciech Jaruzelski had become the prime minister. Despite attempts at dialogue, both Solidarity and the Communist Party remained fragmented. Also, there was a period of martial law which was characterized by the oppression of opposition and underground activism. However, by the late 1980s, with the onset of reforms in the Soviet Union and continued economic hardships, both the government and the opposition sought a resolution. Negotiations and protests continued until the roundtable negotiations in 1989, which set the stage for the historic Polish legislative election in June, signaling the decline of communism in Poland. The Third Polish Republic, 1989 Today. In 1989, at the reenacted Polish roundtable, the communists and opposition leaders reached an agreement. This paved the way for local autonomy, job assurances, and legalizing independent trade unions, among other reforms. Facing a soaring inflation rate of 900% by the end of 1989, Poland took aggressive measures, most notably the Balsarowicz Plan, 
to shift its economy from state-controlled to a free market. By the end of 1989, Poland had transformed its constitution and political identity, moving away from communism. In 1990, the political landscape continued to evolve with the election of Lech Walesa as Poland's first publicly elected president. In 1997, Poland adopted a new constitution, replacing the modified communist one. This signaled the nation's intent to join global alliances, which was realized when Poland became a NATO member in 1999 and joined the EU in 2004. The political landscape underwent another shift in 2015 with the election of the Conservative Law and Justice Party. The subsequent years witnessed tensions between Poland and the EU, particularly concerning judicial reforms. By 2019, the Law and Justice Party maintained its dominance in Polish politics, even as Jarosław Kaczynski, not an official government member, became a significant political figure. President Andrzej Duda's re-election in 2020 further solidified their position. Furthermore, Poland emerged as a staunch ally of Ukraine during the 2022 Russian invasion. As the conflict escalated, Poland welcomed over 1.5 million Ukrainian refugees. As we are ending this video, thank you for watching the whole episode. Your support means a lot to us. If you found this content valuable, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends and family. Engaging with our content helps us create more informative and entertaining videos for you. Until next time, take care and stay curious.